Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship. Worship as we celebrate Christ on this gorgeous Sunday morning. We are glad you are here worshiping our Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth. A special welcome. We saw the bus pull up and we were wondering who it was. Uh, Boy Scouts from central Massachusetts, welcome. We're glad you're here this morning. And you're on your way to Michigan State? Good place. Don't go much further south. There's another school down there that you don't want to go to. But Michigan State's good. Michigan, welcome. Enjoy worshiping with you here this morning. Vacation Bible School. I'll have Jennifer come up. Incredible. Absolutely amazing. You see all the food back there? The kids were bringing that in all week. An incredible witness of faith. On Friday, I stood up and I said, the church is going to match whatever you bring in. They just start bringing in more and more and more stuff. So uh, the, the, the shelves of community care are absolutely empty. And so hopefully it'll be filled. But thank you, Jennifer, for an incredible vacation Bible school. Uh, all week long, you had kids filling this place. And you, you, you look a lot more rested than you did on Friday. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Awesome, fantastic, spectacular, uplifting, just fantastic. I can't even, I don't even have the right words. Great week. We welcomed 58 to 61 kids every day this week. It was fantastic. I, get, I'm, I have chills just thinking about it. <laughs> it was great. We had a challenge for the kids to bring in a thousand pieces either food or school supplies. They brought in over 1,039 items there. And Tom said, let's match it. As you leave today, you can see what the kids brought in. And if you go down to the fellowship hall, you can see what our church has already matched. If you have anything you'd like to donate, we could add to that pile. It would be awesomely fantastic if you could help. So as Tom said, our community care shelves were empty. And now when we get these over there this week, it, that won't be the case. So, that is true. And thank you. This would not have been possible without all the volunteers that helped get this um, going and providing this for our community. Thank you. Thank you again, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't haul enough in yesterday to keep up with the kids here this week, so we'll have to add a little bit to that coffer back there. Um, Carol Culler. Good morning. Um, as you probably know from what you've been seeing in the bulletin, the newsletter, and so forth, the missions committee has been collecting school supplies, and you can see what a wonderful job VBS did with that as well this week. Um, I just wanted to let you know that next Sunday is the last Sunday to be to bring in supplies. There are lists on the missions bulletin boards back there. Um, we've had lists in the newsletter and the bulletin and so forth. Um, the one thing that is new to this that I wanted to make sure you are aware of, next weekend, the 7th through the 9th, the state has implemented a new program, and it's called a holiday from um, taxes, so that there will be no tax charged any school supplies or any uh, clothing, uh, footwear, whatever that you would be buying for, uh, for children to go back to school. The, um, the limit on this is the clothing item can be no more than $75. If you pay $76 for a clothing item, you're going to pay tax on it. Um, and the same thing with the uh, school supplies, that limit is $20. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have a bill of $100 and as long as no item is over that $20 or that $75, um, you, it will be tax free. So. Good for you to know, for your kids, your grandkids, and for bringing supplies in to us. Thank you for your support. Okay, thank you, Carol. Liz. Today's our golf outing, 1 o'clock at Brentwood Golf Course. Please do not be late because we need to get going before <laughs> and keep up with everybody. 
Also, Young at Heart, on the road, in the bulletin, please read it. If you want to go and want to get on the bus, which the bus is free, and there's only 24 people allowed on the bus, so if you want to ride on that, well, you better let me know. Thank you. All right. Let us now greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Please remain standing for hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. Once again, good morning and welcome. It is a privilege to be in God's house. It is a joy to believe. It is a joy to know that our Redeemer lives. We are glad you're here. Many joys surround us. The joy of mission and ministry in the Lord's name. The, the joy of family. The joy of friends. Uh, the joy of just uh, doing the Lord's work. And, and as I look out the door here and I see that pile of stuff on the table. I want to tell you a little joy. I was going to mention this during preaching, but if I start doing it again, just tell me, Tom, you know, don't do it again. The kids were so excited about bringing bags of food in. I mean, they had smiles on their face. They couldn't wait to help feed the hungry people in North Ridgeville. I mean, it was the most amazing thing. If you, if you were here, if you were volunteering, and you saw them, their enthusiasm was contagious. I mean, just absolutely incredible. So uh, there's a lot of uh, incredible children and incredible people. Uh, so uh, such a joy, such a joy. 
Joy to have the scouts here this morning. Safe passage up to Michigan and safe passage home. Uh, enjoy Cedar Point. I assume you're going from here to there. That's good. We will pray for you. A lot of joys around us. A lot of concerns fill our hearts. And so please note those on the prayer list. There's a couple I'd like to add. Please uh, keep in your prayers Eric and Sarah, the family and friends of Barb Rydell, and also uh, Rick Jams. Uh, are there other concerns or joys of the church? I would just like to thank all of you for your prayers. For my husband Dave, he's doing very well. He's up and about, and uh, the little setbacks we had are all getting very well. <laughs> and my sister-in-law's mother-in-law, who had went through radiation, she is 100%. Her last radiation is Monday, and she's 89. And she thanks everyone for her for your prayers also. All right. Thank you, Martha. Are there others? Please pray for the uh, Dean Asp family. Their uh, father passed away about two weeks ago, and now the mother has passed away. Thank you. The Dean Asp family. Are there others? Let us then bow our heads and lift our hearts. Lord Jesus, as we gather in your house here today, to give you thanks and praise for all the blessings of our day, the blessings of our, our friendships, our family, the blessings of serving you with all the gifts that you, you have given to us each day of our lives. Lord God, we come here to celebrate. We come here knowing that no matter where we go, no matter what we have done, uh, that you are with us. Because Lord God, we know that we oftentimes uh, stray from the path just a tad, and some of us more than others, Lord God, but you forgive us, uh, you sanctify us, you pick us up, you bind our wounds and set us free to do your work, Lord God, and for that we give you our eternal thanks and praise. Lord God, as we gather this day, we do come with joy in this gorgeous day, and we, we do uh, thank you, Lord, for bringing the scouts and, and safe passage for them there and home. Uh, Lord God, for all those who are traveling, travel blessings upon them uh, during this uh, summer season. Uh, Lord God, we do pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We, we pray for the Dean Asked family. We pray for the family and friends of Bob Andrews, the family and friends of Richard Wittick, and the family and friends of Barbara Idell. Lord God, uh, may the tears of loss be transformed into tears of joy with certain affirmation of everlasting life for the ones they have lost. Lord God, we, we lift up to you those who are hospitalized, those who are uh, anticipating surgeries and procedures and outcomes in the upcoming week, and also we pray for those who are recovering from surgeries in the, in the weeks gone by. Uh, Lord God, we, we pray for those who are homebound, uh, we pray for all the caregivers that surround all these people, Lord God, and the medical community as they use the gifts that you have given them uh, to make folks well. Lord God, we lift up to you Amy and Ron, for Kevin and Nikki and Eric, for Debbie and Ellen, for Lorna and Jim, for Sarah, for Nancy, for Janet and Sally, for Calvin and David and Hal and for Rick. And for all those others, we've lifted up to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, heal their bodies, nourish their faith. Set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves, that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you've begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ooh. Will the children please come forward? I didn't forget about you. Come on down. Been a fun week, hasn't it? You guys have fun this week? I have had a lot of fun this week. Come on down. I'm really glad all of you are here this morning. This morning, we're going to talk about the body of Christ. You know what a body is? Well, you have a body, you have a body, I have a body, he has a body too. They all have bodies. And we all have different parts that do different things. You know, if we have eyes to see or nose to smell or, or ears to hear, or whatever it might be, God gives us different gifts and, and, and blessings and all that sort of thing. But you know what the, the body of Christ is all of us put together. And I started thinking about the body of Christ. And it's a big body. Did you know, there's a lot of people go to football games every, every, every week during the season, aren't there? There's a lot of people go to soccer all over the place. Did you know that there are more people coming to worship on Sunday morning than people going to watch baseball games, football games, basketball games, professional and college and world soccer? More people coming to worship on Sundays than any of those things combined. There's a lot of people in God's body, aren't there? And a lot of people with a lot of special gifts. You know, when you look out there, and it's hard to see because I'm sitting on the floor here, but all the, uh, everybody out there has all the gifts. You look at our, our Boy Scout visitors and you see, you see all the badges and stuff on their uniforms. That means they, they, they did a lot of things. Uh, they studied to get, get different badges, and they prepared for things, and they did things, and, 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 they, and they refined the gifts that, that God has given them. So everybody has gifts to share, even you and you and you. Uh, don't know what they are sometimes, but God will let you know, because you're part of the body of Christ too, and that's a good thing. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for you. We thank you for blessing us so much. We give you thanks, Lord, for just uh, being a part of our life and most importantly, for allowing us to be part of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for coming this morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is now time to lift our hearts, ties, and offerings up to the Lord.
God, we give you thanks for the privilege of coming to your house this day to offer our praise and thanksgiving for all that you have done, all that you have given to us. Lord God, bless these gifts and bless our lives. Sanctify them for your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with joy and the renewal of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning is from St. Paul's First letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized in the one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we are all made to drink of one spirit. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. And I will show you a still more excellent way. You are gifted. You are gifted by God with many things. You might not think you are, but you are. The question is, what are they? Well, I know what I don't possess. I can't run very fast. I can't jump at all. I can't throw a baseball 98 miles an hour. I probably can't throw it 40 miles an hour anymore. I can't dance. I don't have any rhythm. Dancing with the stars is not an option for this flat-footed individual. But I see so many other people with so many incredible gifts. I look out into the congregation here this morning, and I see folks that possess far more than I could ever imagine. And it's amazing, and I keep saying, well, why can't I do this? And God says, stop. Wait a minute. I bless you not for what other people have, but for what I want you to have. So as we gather here this morning, we consider what it is to be the body of Christ. Walking through vacation Bible school this past week, I saw people with some incredible gifts. I saw teachers. I saw a teacher up here actually have 64 kids quiet. In fact, even asked them, what the difference was between 1,000 and 708 to see how many things they had to bring in on Friday, and somebody answered the question. It wasn't right, but they answered the question. So we had teachers, we had advisors, we had youth, we had people who, who cooked, we had people who cleaned, we had people who were just there, and their very presence was a gift to many people. I mean, there are many things that people can do, and one person came up to me and said, well, I didn't do anything this week. I said, you've got to be kidding. You're, you're put on a pedestal by all the kids. And, and she said, you've got to be kidding. I said, I am not kidding. That's what it is to be part of the body of Christ. We all have gifts. Sometimes we just have to discover them. We know what we think we know. We know some of the things we think we can do. But then we say, I'm not sure. 
this winter we're going to have a little gathering here at the church about how to find our spiritual gifts and our strengths, and that's, that'll be forthcoming. That's not coming until January. We've got a lot of other things that happen right now, but until then, know that you are gifted because God loves you. I was going to say a whole lot of other things. I was going to say, you know, how many things that, that we all do and how, many, how much God loves you and how much God has given you everything. And then about midweek, as I was thinking about this preaching, as I was reflecting upon the scripture text for the day, I heard God laughing. You ever hear God laugh at you? I hear God laughing at me all the time. You see, I had something in my mind that I wanted to talk about to the saints this morning. That's all you, by the way. And God said, in a roundabout way, no, I think you've got to change what you want to tell them here this morning. I want you to tell them how important this community of faith is. How important it is to be part of the body of Christ. And how incredibly large that body of Christ is. The body of Christ, the church, dwarfs ExxonMobil, dwarfs Walmart, dwarfs Apple. The number one chain of hospitals in the world There are more faith-based hospitals throughout the world than any other organization offers. The church is the number one charitable organization in the world. The church has more orphanages than anyone else in the world. The church is there when there's a disaster before anyone else in the world. And as I was telling the kids here this morning, when you put together all of us here on Sunday morning, all the other churches on Sunday morning will include some of those that meet on Wednesdays too, Throughout the world, there are more people sitting in the pews of a church than there are sitting in the stands watching an athletic competition. By far and away. You combine that with a great cloud of witnesses who are worshiping in the great church triumphant. Imagine what we are a part of. You talk about being something far greater than ourselves, you're sitting in it. You see, church goes beyond even here, though. In the Gospel of Matthew, Peter was given the keys to the kingdom. Remember when Jesus was talking to Peter, and, and you, you know the story that, that uh, Jesus was asking the disciples, hey, what's the, uh, you know, what's the talk around town about me? Who, what are they saying about me out in the parking lot and all this sort of thing? And the disciples were kind of confused in their response to Jesus, and they said, you know, they really don't know who you are. But then Jesus looked at Peter and said, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter came back and said, well, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus said, Peter, you're the rock. And upon this rock I will build my church, and not even the gates of hell will withstand it. But you know that word church didn't mean a building. The Greek word that was used in the text is ekklesia. The ekklesia is the body, it is the people. Oh, it's nice to have this building around us. Especially in the wintertime in northeastern Ohio and Worcester, Mass. But you know, that's not what the church is. It is the body of Christ. It, are, it is people reaching out 
to surround people with love, care, and comfort. It is about witnessing a more excellent way to live. I bring up the children. I'm not kidding you. Their hearts were on fire. I couldn't help but witness the joy that they brought into the house this week. The adults. Jennifer looked awfully tired on Friday. There were kids running until they told them to stop, and guess what? They stopped. Well, they kept starting to run again. (laughs) And we asked them to stop. The body of Christ goes beyond here, is the point. And so what God, I think, wants us to know is that what we are about here, not only this morning, but seven days a week, is fundamentally the most important thing that we can be a part of. The most important thing. I want to tell you a story. I'll cut it short for time, because I know there's donut time coming up. I know you've got to get to Cedar Point. I remember when I got my call to ministry. And it was at a time of, of great loss. We were, we were bearing a baby we lost in the courtyard of United Methodist Church of Berea. And I was mad, man. I was, I was mad at God. I was swearing at God. I did not have good words for God on that morning. It was in March. And you know, I March sometimes in northeastern Ohio, and, and yeah, it gets that cold air, and when there's all that brick around there, it gets really cold. And it was cold. I was mad. My face was red, not because it was cold, because I was mad. You know, I mean, third-generation Irishman, there's just something, something about it. Well, anyhow, I was standing there. The preacher was trying to say all these nice things. You know how we preachers do to make us feel good during those times of loss, and it's an important, important thing. But all of a sudden, I felt this heat going up my spine, So hot. I mean, it really was. It was incredibly hot. I said, what in the world's going on? And I felt this heat, and then God was in my head saying, you know, Tom, it's time. It's time. You might be mad at me, but it's time. You got to get out of what you're doing and proclaim the word. And then I started thinking about Growing up at the United Methodist Church of Berea, hate to say it, but I was a bum. Didn't do anything real bad, I don't think, or at least I was never caught. But all those people that were part of that congregation still loved me, still cared about me. Oh, I said some dumb things. I did some dumb things. And God was putting in my head, you know, Tom, other people need that same affirmation in their life too. That we're not all perfect. That we all make mistakes. That we need a community to support us. Not just in the good times. Celebrated a wedding yesterday, and those are good times. Those are happy times. But we need God all the time. We need God when we know we've messed up. And we need the body of Christ around us when we mess up. We need the body of Christ when we're hurting. We need the body of Christ when we've had a loss that has ripped open our hearts and left a wound that may never go away. We need God during those times. That's what the body of Christ is about. The body of Christ is not about green carpet or blue carpet or red carpet or pink carpet, which we will not even consider for the sanctuary, but it's not about all that stuff. It is about surrounding God's people with grace, with power, and with support. That's what the body of Christ is. And it's big, man, because it has to be. 
Because we have big challenges in our lives. We have big challenges in our world. And the creator of the universe has said, I'm going to give you a gift. You are gifted, is what God has said. Next time you catch yourself saying, I'm just going to church. We just have a hundred people in worship, or 130, or 20 people in worship. Not the body of Christ, man. The body of Christ has 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 people in worship. That's what we're a part of. The great church triumphant. You want to know how many people are in that church? Don't know. Lost count. But they're still there. The body of Christ. That's our baptism. That is God loving us so much that God's not going to let us go. That's what church is about. It's not a building. It's far grander than that. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord, for your body. We give you thanks, Lord, for drawing us into this place. We give you thanks, Lord, for the privilege of serving you, for the privilege of of accepting the gifts that you have given us to reach out in, in love, compassion, and grace. Thank you, Lord, for transforming our lives and making us uniquely called and empowered to do your work. Thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ that extends so far beyond these walls, so far beyond the skies. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Will those who are helping with communion please come forward? This morning we are celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. We'll be taking communion by intention, so if you take a piece of bread, then dip it in the cup, uh, and there will be folks coming up and will guide and guide you along the way. This table is not the table of Fields United Methodist Church or the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all are welcome to this place, all who seek a closer relationship with God and with each other. So we come here humbly acknowledging who we are, but most importantly, whose we are. So let us pray together the prayer of confession and pardon. Let us pray. Merciful God, We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us and for all of God's creation. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us continue with the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which our Lord and Savior gave himself up for us, he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks to you, blessed it, and broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, giving thanks to you, blessed it and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ. 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 This is the body. All are welcome to come to the Lord's table.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this gift of everlasting life. We give you thanks for this food that will nourish our bodies and our souls. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, bless us with your peace, your power, that as we go from this place, we may serve you with all that we are and all that you have given us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's stand and sing together. Numbers 617, verses 1, 2, and 5. Our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. <laughs>